When you are faced with a situation where you have to pick between two projects, say A and B, and the two projects differ with respect to the timing of their cash flows, then it turns out that if you pick the project with the higher IRR, you could be picking the project with the lower MPV. So consider, for example, the situation where you have two projects, A and B. They both require the same amount of initial investment, but they differ with respect to the timing of their cash inflows. Specifically, project A is yielding high cash inflows earlier on in its life, whereas project B has cash outflows in the first couple of years, but then it has cash inflows that are occurring later in its life. Now, if you calculate the IRR of these two projects, it turns out that the IRR of A is 17%, which is more than what project B is yielding, which is 12%. However, if your discount rate is 5% and you calculate the NPV of these two projects, it turns out that the NPV of project B is higher. And so here lies the problem. There's an inconsistency between what NPV is telling you to do, which is go with project B, whereas IRR is telling you to go with project A. More specifically, when we calculate the NPV of project A and B for different discount rates, we find that the NPV of B is high when discount rates are rather low. So between 0 and 8%, project B is better because it has the higher NPV. It is only when the discount rates become rather high, like 9% or more, that project A becomes the better project. And so what NPV is really telling us is that, look, the project that you should go with kind of depends on what your discount rate is. If the discount rate is 5%, then yes, go with project B. In fact, if your discount rate were even 8%, you should have gone with project B. However, if your discount rate were any higher, like 9, 10, or 12%, then you should have gone with project A. However, IRR is unequivocally saying, look, A is always the better project because it has the higher IRR. And so this is where the inconsistency is occurring between these two projects. Now, one way in which we can remedy this inconsistency is by calculating something called the incremental internal rate of return of project B. Let me explain. So let's suppose you settle with project A, maybe because it has the higher IRR. And now somebody comes to you and says, look, what if you move or switch from A to B? What are the incremental cash flows that you will get from project B? In other words, what are the incremental cash flows that you will get as you make this move? Now you're going to say, well, at time period zero, nothing's going to happen. Nothing, nothing's going to go out or come in because they both cost the same. So incremental cash flows are zero. But in year one, if I had stuck with project A, I would have gotten $8,000. But if I move to project B, I actually have to dish out $1,000. So the incremental cash outflow or what I lose is basically $9,000. And so notice I'm coming up with this number by taking negative 1,000 and subtracting 8,000. So I'm doing B minus A. I'm taking the cash flow in B and subtracting the cash flow in A. And so basically when I say this is project B minus A. This basically what this means is that this is, these are the cash flows that I would get as I go from A to B. So these are the incremental cash flows of project B, what I get as I move from A to B. In year two, if I move from A to B, then I would lose 6,000 because with A, I'm getting 5,000. With B, I'll be dishing out $1,000. So I'll be losing $6,000. In year three, however, project B is the better project because I gain $3,000. And then in year four, I gain $15,500 as I go from A to B. Now, the question is, is this a worthwhile move? Well, one way in which we can reflect on that is by calculating the internal rate of return of these cash flows. Now, because these are incremental cash flows, when we calculate the internal rate of return of these cash flows, we will refer to that as the incremental IRR. So I'm going to write IIRR, where the first I stands for incremental. In other words, this is the extra 
the extra, the incremental rate of return that we are going to earn as we go from A to B. Now, whether this is a worthwhile move or not will depend on what our discount rate is because if the next best thing that we can get or the opportunity cost of our capital is 5%, then because 8.97%, which is the extra rate of return as we're going from A to B, because that is more than the next best thing that we could have done, we'd say make the move. So move, so move from A to B. Why? Because the extra rate of return that we're getting as we're making that move, which is 8.97%, that is more than what we could have done elsewhere had we not made this move. Now, in contrast, let's suppose, so I'm going to write K here, where let's suppose K is our discount rate. Now, let's suppose that we're, our discount rate were something like 15%, right? In that case, because 8.97% is less than 15%, we would have said, don't, don't make the move. Don't move from A to B. Why? Because the extra rate of return that you're getting as you're making this move is less than what you could have done elsewhere with this money. And so this is the way that you would interpret and use the incremental IRR to decide whether it's worthwhile moving from A to B. What is nice about this incremental IRR is that all of a sudden it is making things consistent with NPV, specifically when your discount rate was 5%. We know that NPV of B was more than NPV of A. And now all of a sudden, if your IRR is 8.97%, and then with the discount rate of 5%, your IIRR is also telling you, look, if you're at A, move from A to B because B is the better project, which is the same thing as saying that B is the project with the higher NPV. In contrast, if your discount rate were something like 15%, then because 8.97% is less than 15%, IIRR would say don't make the move. And in fact, if I take you back to the table where we are seeing the NPVs of both projects A and B for different discount rates, then notice that for 15%, the NPV of A is higher than NPV of B. In other words, if you're at A, you shouldn't make the move from A to B because A is the higher NPV project. And Incremental IRR is basically telling the same thing. It's saying, look, 8.97%, which is the extra return that you're getting as you're moving from A to B, is less than 15%. Therefore, don't move from A to B because A is the better project. So one additional way in which we can reflect on this IIRR is by looking at the NPV profiles of projects A and B. So we know that for rather low discount rates like 5%, project B has higher NPV, which is this orange line compared to project A, which is reflected by this blue line. In contrast, for rather high discount rates like 15%, Project A has the higher NPV compared to Project B. This point right over here, which is referred to as the crossover rate, this is the point where the NPVs of the two projects are exactly the same. It turns out that this is exactly what we have calculated vis-a-vis -vis the incremental IRR. So notice that this intersection is happening right around 9%. To be more precise, this is exactly 8.97%. So what is it that we're saying? We're saying that, look, if our discount rate is something low, like 5%, then if the extra rate of return that we're getting is 8.97% as we're moving from A to B, we should make this move. And that is consistent with this idea that at 5%, the NPV of B is more than the NPV of A, so we should move from A to B. In contrast, if our discount rate were something like 15%, then our IIRR is telling us that, look, because this number is less than 15%, the extra return that we're getting is less than our discount rate, we shouldn't move from A to B. And that is also consistent with this idea 
that for 15% discount rate, NPV of A is more than NPV of B. So if, if we are at A, we shouldn't move from A to B. And so this is how for mutually exclusive projects, we can uh, draw consistency between IRR and NPV by calculating the incremental internal rate of return.